Yeah, uh, blessings on, on us all this morning. Blessings on everyone throughout the world, Trinidad and Tobago. And let us all reflect on what is going on in India. We, uh, we see St. Vincent is, um, is coming together now because of the volcanic eruption, right? And other parts of the world, this war that is going on in um, Jerusalem and so on, these are not nice scenes for us to be watching on the internet, the television, or on the screen. But this is the kind of world that we live in today. Um, just a while ago, as I was saying, um, I was on Facebook, looking at Facebook, and I saw this religious group in an argument with the police, with the police in San Fernando, if I'm not mistaken, in San Fernando. This religious group came out to pray. And they were praying, they were praying by in obedience with the regulations of the COVID-19. The police came to stop them and they argued, they had their right. Of, of course, we have um, a, national, a national anthem, every creed and race find an equal place. But finding an equal place in a pandemic, a COVID-19 pandemic, where people are dying, millions all over the world, you have to forget about that. We have to forget about that. Or if we have to think about finding an equal place let us find an equal place within the laws, within the regulations of the COVID-19, so we will not find that equal place six feet deep or being burnt, being cremated. So whenever a law is passed, it is not passed to be practiced all the time as it was passed to be practiced. We have to use our intelligence. We have to use our common sense. So I'm calling on all religion, Buddhists, Hinduism, Gurus, Imams, Babalaos, pastors, priests, what have you. Let us use our common sense that the Most High, that the Almighty has given to us so that the, the vibrations, the positive vibrations of the divine forces can manifest in us, can manifest in our common sense, in our thoughts, so that we can do the right thing according to what is going on, or according to what is arising at the right time. My people, if I, as a Calypsonian, go by the roadside and start singing Calypso with a guitar or with a speaker or something, that's what it means, I alone. Eh? It's in an four and five together, I alone. And the police come and stop me. The police have a right to stop me. If one preacher goes by the roadside to preach the police, have a right to stop him. If not, the police will have to pay special attention to the preacher and what goes around the, the preacher or the Calypsonian and what goes around the, the Calypsonian. 
So we are dealing with two words, attraction and distraction. Now, distraction is needed, not attraction. Because if you go with a group of religious people or spiritual people, what have you, and they say, well, look, one stand here, the other one will go about five feet, standing there and five feet, and they all stand, they'll all be practicing social distancing. But you are the person preaching. Why are you preaching? You are preaching because you want to attract. Not the Holy Spirit, as some of you may say. Not the divine forces, not Allah or whatever religion it belongs to. Because you can get that attraction at home. You can pray at home and be attracted. Because you know, according to the long time team, God is here, there, and everywhere. So you don't have to come out on the promenade. You don't have to come out on some square, on some corner to preach. Otherwise, you will be doing it for attraction. And we don't want that kind of attraction as things are today throughout the world and in Trinidad and Tobago because we have just declared Trinidad and Tobago as an emergency, a state of emergency in Trinidad and Tobago and also a curfew. So if you come out to pray and your social distancing you are causing attraction because tell me why. Once you start to pray, people will be passing. People will want to listen, and that is attraction. People will want to stand up, whether they stand up for, for 10, 15 seconds. And then one man comes and he finds that something is very attractive to his thoughts. Maybe you have said something while praying. And you stand up and listen. And maybe the next man wants to come and stand up and listen also. And the next man and the next man. Then somehow people will be more attracted, attraction, attracted to what you are saying. And they will not be trying to distract themselves from disobeying the regulations of the COVID-19. Distraction, attraction, distraction. They will be more attracted. They can be more emotionally attracted to what you see. And when one man comes and stands up, and next man comes and stands up, and next man may be talking to the next man, who is these people? I like what they're saying, blah, blah, blah. And then they come. There is a disobedience of the regulations of the COVID-19. You, as the preacher, do you have people around to control that? Did you inform the police if it is necessary for you to go outside and pray, knowing that it will cause attraction? So when two, three people come and the other people come and people start to get emotionally involved, Hallelujah, yes, praise the Lord, blah, 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 blah. And they start to forget that we are in a COVID-19 regulation, a pandemic state, a state of emergency. What will happen? You already know that some people are so emotion, emotional about prayers and whatever it is. And this is what we are trying to avoid. So if I go out there and say, listen, I'm going to see my calypso. I stand up here alone. And probably the next calypso will stand up about six feet from me. The fact is, I am singing. And I am seeing so that it will reach the people's ears who are passing. And by doing so, I will be causing an attraction. And to attract something means to bring something towards you, to cause something to be attentive to what you are saying, doing, or whatever it is. So since I am doing that, and I have no control over what will happen or what may happen in the next 10, 15 minutes. Or even self I have control. It means to say that the police must intervene. The police must be there. 
And knowing that prevention is better than cure, the police have to say, eh, eh. I don't want to say, yes, I know you all are praying. Yes, I know you all are doing something good. But you all are not thinking about the emotional attraction of what could take place while you all are there. For, for example, people may come and ask the people who are with you, who are this group, what all they are, what they may, they will be in agreement, and whatever, and what have you, and what have you. And then who knows how much people could be attracted. No, we are not saying that it will be exactly like that. But what the police is perceiving, right? What the police is trying to see is that it does not happen. So all religion, prevention is better than cure. Religious people. If any religious man go outside there and pray, or say believe in Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ, Allah, whatever it is, and one person goes to his house, suffering from the COVID-19 and that person is cured without even being quarantined. And another person is cured and another person is cured. And the government understands, hey, this man, people lining up and going to his house and he's praying for them and they're being cured. You think the police will come and say, no, go away? Because it will be an asset. It will be an help to the government. For that matter, if you're curing people 20, 85, 100 people for the day through your, your miracle ministries or your Jesus Christ thing or your Allah is the greatest thing or what have you, it will save the government some money. So since you know you cannot do that, put your tail between your legs, hush your mouth, and keep yourself quiet. Umar Muhammad Kalusunan disciple, thank you very much for listening to me.